one of the things that we like to do in Video Live is like we do it live. We don't add to, change to, or rearrange where we're at, what we're doing, or how we're doing it. We don't edit, in other words. In other words, we don't sit down and plan out, you know, where the sun's going to be, where the sun's going to shine, how dark it'll be, how light it'll be, if the camera's working right, or if the microphone's working right. Because that's why it's called Video Live. And as a matter of fact, what we're doing is interesting because we're out in Dunnigan. So this is the Dunnigan series. Dunnigan is a little farm community that's outside of uh, Sacramento, a little ways away. And it's kind of like out on the flats, you know, and it's kind of like in the middle of nowhere. I mean, as a matter of fact, I used to drive by it, and I used to stop at the Dunnigan truck stop, and that was the only thing I knew about Dunnigan, until God sent my wife and I from Reno, Nevada, to Dunnigan to start the Dunnigan Christian Fellowship. And because a pastor friend of mine, Bob Langfield, had come out of retirement, we had come to help grow up and to develop this ministry as a missionary outreach. And we helped that at that time. So this whole series, the Dunnigan series, is about the beginning, the middle, and the end of the Dunnigan Christian Fellowship. Now, there may be Christians still going on in a type of environment that's still here in Dunnigan. I'm sure because they're saved, and I know that they've gone on with the Lord and developed into those type of people that God wanted them to be. The pastor himself has gone on to retirement and left behind these landmarks that have framed that with which God has used as a witness and as a testimony, both of the success and the failing of a ministry. And that's why the Dunnigan series has two parts. In Video Live, we have a part of it that we're going to discuss about the good that God had done in my life and in the life of my wife as well as in the people's lives around us. But we're also going to do a series called Failing, when God wants something to fail and why he may intend it to fail so that he can bring forth fruit from it. Because the scriptures tell us that except a kernel of wheat fall into the ground and die, it shall not bring forth fruit. And I can tell you this, based upon my knowledge of scripture, my knowledge of experience with the Lord and what I have seen with my own eyes, what I have heard with my own ears and what I've handled with my own hands, God is able to bring out fruit from places you would not have imagined or from things that look like they had failed. God makes into a success. We're told in the scriptures that who can make crooked that which he has made straight? And he also says, who can make straight that which he has made crooked? So I rejoice in the things that God has made, and I'm glad for the time that I spent in Dunnigan, because Dunnigan brought me to a realization of that place that you have to trust in the Lord only and suffer sometimes the consequences of his decision-making process that you might not want to do what you're doing at the time. Today I wanted to share a word that I have in Springs in the Desert that says, what I do, what I do, there we go. What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter, from John 13, 7. And really what that does is that reminds each and every one of us that we don't know at the time what we're doing, though we think we went there for a purpose or a design that God intended. And we may have prayed about, talked about, planned out, and coordinated all of our efforts in a certain way. But you see, we're only told by the Lord to obey. We're not told what the results of our obedience will be. Jesus said it this way, which is an interesting way of reminding us. He said, I am the vine. You are the branches. No vine, you know, nobody can bear fruit without being attached to the vine. But he said something interesting more than that. He made the statement that was real fascinating because he said, my father is the husbandman. You see, his father was the one who actually planted the vine. His father is the one who determined how the vine would grow. As a matter of fact, God is the one, our father, who decides what will grow and what won't grow. Matter of fact, what the purpose of a vine is, we don't often know. We don't know what it's designed for until it's being used. As a matter of fact, you can see behind me right now that there's a vine. There is some plants that have grown up and they have been used for purpose. And that purpose, believe it or not, is to cover and segregate and separate one piece of property from another. As a matter of fact, you can see some flowers that are blooming. You can see some wild roses that are growing. 
you can see that there was a purpose for and that it is a vine because you can see the vine behind it with the little twinkers. So we don't often know exactly the purpose that we were created for, but we do know who created us. We don't always know why something is happening, but we know that God is directing. Our design and our purpose that God has given to us is simply to ask him, as we're told, seek him and we would find, to knock and the door would be open. So if we have asked God, if we have sought the Lord in some way, if we've decided in some way that we're going to follow after the Lord our God, you know, and seek to do his will, then we may not always understand what his will is. We only understand what he's told us today to do. We only understand each day as he prepares us with the day to follow his way, to follow his will, to not act according to our own decision-making process, but to trust in the Lord with all our heart, leaning not in our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging him, and he would direct our path. He didn't say he'd explain it. He didn't say he would tell us every detail. He just said, hey, I'll direct you if you're willing to go. And that's why we take it to the streets, you see. It's not always about what we think we know. Sometimes it's just about go, and you'll find out. As you go, you will know. But if you don't go, you'll never know. And that's kind of what brings me back to the scripture that we read. Because in John, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's straightforward. It's John 13, 7, and you can look it up. John 13, 7 says, What I do thou knowest not now. Okay, that's pretty clear. I don't know, but you shall know hereafter. And you know, I'm a Christian for a long time. I've been around for quite a few years, and it's beginning to tell. Because, you know, I can look back at some of the things that have happened to me, some of the things I've done, some of the things that I've handled by own hands, and I can say, wow, look at what the Lord did. Because what I did, I had no clue. But what he did, man, that made perfect sense. Now I see what God has designed me to be and what God designed for me to be in that time, in that place, and in that purpose. And that's what I wanted to say about the video series, is that in Dunnigan, this Dunnigan series, oh yeah, we thought we knew what we were doing. Oh, we thought we knew what we were getting in store for, but little did we know until afterwards what God intended the Dunnigan Christian Fellowship 